Welcome, Extended Gamut Podcast. Episode 11. Episode 11, special guest, Matt Crawford, president of Onyx, is it Onyx? What is it? Onyx Onyx Graphics Graphics Incorporated. Incorporated. Onyx Graphics. So we are delighted to have him with us, and we are going to dive in here to learn a little bit about Onyx, a little bit about Matt. It's the future of the RIP software industry, so let's do it. All right, let's do it. Thanks, guys. Happy to be here. All right, great. Well, we're super excited to have you with us. I Happy think. to be here. Yeah, thanks. So we, uh, you, you've taken a new job. It's got not that new now, but um, last when, July. Last July, as president at uh, Onyx. So how's that going? It, it's great. Um, I've been at Onyx for twenty years. Last November, so it's it's been a long run. I've done had roles in sales, sales management. Um, I managed. Uh, product management and marketing before I took over as president and CEO. Yeah. It's, uh, so you've kind of seen the ride. whole, you've seen the whole, uh, every part of the operation, I guess. That, that was the strategy, right? Yeah. So, um, Kevin Agawa, our, our, the, who's my boss actually, who's the president of Canon USA is a big believer in, moving during your career, getting different perspectives, um, seeing different aspects of the business so that as you grow, you have that context. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's been great. Yeah. That's awesome. And so we first met, uh, whatever, 10 or 12 years ago, you were our account right? rep. And so I think, yeah, you've really helped us as we've learned the rip side of things and just continue to grow over those years. And it's cool to see how your career has taken you and yeah, so been a fun ride. Yeah, Matt and I uh, have something in common. We're both lovers of Jeeps. Jeeps, yeah. oh, that was and right? I remember back in the day, anytime Matt would come, I would know Matt was here because the Jeep would pull up. Right, I've been a, a Wrangler guy for for a long time, on and off with kids and so forth. But yeah, right now I'm I am a 2014 Wrangler guy. There you go. And you're out in Salt Lake City, so you've got a place you can. I mean, you can drive it. You could probably do. He do lives anything. on top of a mountain, and he takes like uh, he like rock that's crawls like a commercial. all the way up. Yeah, it's like, like a commercial, all, right? Pretty much every day on the way to work. Yeah. That's that's how we roll. Right? That's pretty awesome. All right, so should we talk about printing? Why don't we do that? Let's do it. Okay. So I guess you have a super unique perspective on rips, rip software in general, and the industry. And you said something right before we started that was, I thought was like great. So. You mentioned how RIPS and the future of RIPS software, it's not a, a piece of software connected to a PC, connected to a printer, right. but that you see it evolving. So talk a little bit about that. So the, in my opinion, the whole, the whole industry and model of how we do business is, is changed. Um, COVID really, I, I, I mean, really moved it forward. And it, it, obviously, there were bad things about it. But the, the good side is, as we come out, we had shop owners who lost employees or had to lay employees off. They became production managers. They mm. made the printers print. They had to figure it out. Now, as, as we come out of COVID, those shops are getting much busier, right? They're, the, the print work is coming back. They, in a lot of scenarios, went to hire new people. Well, it was hard to find people to do production now that people are working at home and Mm. and, and that whole model, right? So now it's automation. How does a shop produce what they need to produce without having to invest in the labor to Mm -hmm. do it, right? Mm -hmm. So it's my... Feeling and what I've seen, it's about interconnecting systems. It's about automation. It's about API connectivity, JDF technology, interconnecting, Shopify, web tools, right to the rip, auto nesting. Yeah. Um, to to me, that's that's the future. And uh, as a company, especially as I took over the product, um, I make sure that. We are not a closed system. We are open. If you want to connect to um, different tools and things, we make sure that we have very common 
technologies so that we can connect to whatever you need to connect to. How do you like, what do you say to people? Like everything you said sound, um, sounded amazing right there, but I could see a shop owner or someone myself sometimes, you know, it's like, well, that's for like Elon Musk. Like, right. how, no, that, how do I like, that sounds amazing, but like I have a printer and I have orders and like, how do I make all that happen? And, and I think, you know, especially at, at my age, right? Kind of that thought. Right, Mid, like thirties. Well, that's how I do it. Right, that's how we've always done it. Well, I, I mean, with Chat GPT, I mean the technology that's available to us is incredible. We just have to leverage it. So, a, as we've worked with some companies recently, where where we've worked with people who have no idea, it's magic, right? right. How, how could this even work? I, I don't even, I'm not even a Photoshop expert and, and know how to, to automate tasks through batching and Photoshop. Mm -hmm. And you want me to integrate my system via API and JDF, right. have no idea how to do that. So as we start talking to customers about what it is that's possible, you're, you're right, the integration is the hardest part right. because we know there's common tools for shipping and billing and ripping and web to print, right? Right. So it's really about creating the middleware in the cloud via common API tools that connects all of that. Mm -hmm. Well, the reality is we do that every day. We have hub in our software. We have production management in our software. We've developed those tools for internal usage and now we're working through helping customers to do that for themselves, which five years ago, would I have said that Onyx could work into the integration world? Uh, I probably would have said no. But, but honestly, I think we're going to have to because, I mean, we have the Vista prints, we have the giant shops that have the ability to write this stuff mm -hmm. themselves. We just sell them the tools and they mm -hmm. connect them. But the reality is the core inkjet market that I think is the core of both of our customers, they don't have that ability, right, right. right? So we have to help them. right? And I think those integrated systems are really where the future is for the printing business. Yeah, that's so cool. do you see an opportunity then for people to be to kind of be the middleman between a customer that maybe wants to have more automation and Onyx's platform to, to integrate those two systems? Or does Onyx want to be that middle, you know, like you mentioned Vistaprint and they have the developers and the means to, to write it all. Most people don't have that. Right. Is Onyx saying we want to be able to come alongside customers and actually help write these kind of things? Or do you see that as an opportunity for other companies to step I th in? I think both. I think we will start to do some of that just to prove the concept, right? We can't prove the concept if we don't have anybody to implement it. Mm -hmm. So we've already done a couple of consulting sorts of jobs with customers who don't, didn't have the ability to do it themselves. And secondly, we're working with the Vista Prince or the people that can do it themselves and consulting with them. Hey, here's the, the tools and the things that we provide for you to use. But I, th I think going forward, there's a gap in the channel, right? H how do you guys, how, how, how do we train you mm -hmm. to do some of that? I, I don't know if that's, I don't know where, where that'll go, right? Well, and sometimes as a distributor, like that's how you differentiate yourself. You make your own investments in people and knowledge to help people along that way. And when they say, well, I could buy Onyx from 10 different places. Why would I buy it from you? It's like, well, because we can help you connect Onyx to your idea for automation, possibly, right. and things well, like that. And, and think about a world where that connection includes you. Mm -hmm. I mean, customer knows that you have roles of whatever in stock. You know that a customer has just used up their last spare ink cartridge. Those connections to 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 us in production and you as supplying mm -hmm. the materials, I mean, 
it, it's yeah, it's an obvious evolution of the connection to customer. Yeah. All right, so let's change gears a little bit. You, because we talked about you having a very unique perspective on all the different aspects within Onyx, and so I'm curious what it looks like when like Epson or HP or Canon comes out with a new printer. Um, what does it look like for that to get included into whatever the next uh, Thrive uh, software package is going to be? So where where does it go to? I mean, how do you develop a driver? What's the team look like that does that? And then how does it get brought to market? Right, and the, and there's there's honestly more to it because what you see as a driver in the software when a new release comes out uh, that. That is the result of what at times is years worth of work that's been going on because of our relationships with the manufacturers. Mm -hmm. we're, we're in communication. We know what's coming years in advance. And, it's, and, and some, some technologies, LaTeX, some, some technologies, Epson, where there's a lot of bi-directional communication, mm -hmm. there's a lot of things going, there's a massive amount of work that's needed to make sure that we drive the printer in all the ways it needs to be controlled, right? Yeah. So years, sometimes years in advance, we have meetings with the manufacturer, we're under NDA with all of these companies, they give us uh, an SDK or a software development kit that gives our engineering team the instructions on how to communicate with that printer, what's required, what's needed. R really, it's a set of directions. We have a team of we have a team of engineers um, that take those instructions and turn them into drivers. Do the testing, color management, build profiles, uh, make sure that the um, that the connections and the things that need to work work goes through a very rigorous um, QA mm -hmm. procedure, usually back and forth with the um, printer manufacturer. Um, lots of times we're in direct development with the printer manufacturer. So sometimes it's not always thought out completely and we, and we consult, hmm. right? And um, it, um, it's been a great road. That, that's really a differentiator differentiation that we have is we're able to at a scale where we can write drivers for almost everything that yeah. comes out. So, so with the hands-on portion of that development where you're, you know, sending prints and doing color profiles, is that usually done in Salt Lake city? You'll get a, a unit of whatever printer, or do you go to where the, to Japan or to wherever the printer is being developed or how does that usually work? So it's a combination of both depends on the manufacturer, um, depends on the size we, we don't have the room for for every massive sure. printer, um, but but at times is it, it might seem crazy, but it's some some drivers are just transactional. Here's the instructions: write the driver. We write a driver that our engineer may never even see the printer, mm -hmm. and that goes back to the manufacturer. The manufacturer does the testing, maybe even writes the profiles and so forth. I see. So. We write so many drivers, it would be impossible to be in front of every printer to create every driver. But that's the beauty of the SDK. You shouldn't really need to. But I think about like the chicken and the egg, and it's like, is it that you're trying to get your drivers on every printer possible, or all the printer manufacturers trying to get companies like Onyx to write drivers for themselves? Like, who's driving that transaction? Because there's so many Onyx users that have a bunch of printers that if a printer isn't going to be supported by Onyx, they don't really want the printer. We, we've run into this before, right? Not not with Onyx specifically, but they're, if someone's using ErgoSoft and they uh, can't, the new Epson Aqueous printer isn't going to work on ErgoSoft. Well, the printer's out the door. They're not going to buy that printer because it won't fit on the rip that they're on. So it kind of does. It goes both ways where it's like yeah. Onyx kind of drives the kind of steers the the ship for a lot of these print shops and and we, we just like any business we prioritize based on the value of the investment and what's going to drive revenue hmm. i mean we'd, we'd love to drive everything but we, we we do drive a lot but we do have to make decisions because 
you know, especially with some of the new XY cutters, right? Okay. It's not only if, does the customer have Onyx, does the customer have the printer, but now the the support for the XY cutter also needs to be in the rip. So there, there's a lot going on with making sure that we can drive the flatbed cutter, the XY cutter, right. the printer, um, and we don't have an unlimited set of resources, but uh, I think as far as our competition goes, we support pretty much everything that's that's yeah. needed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's there's a lot that goes on that, you know, just as, you know, you, you see like you go to a trade show and then you see like the rip manufacturers like little tent on top of a printer and you're like, oh, yeah, they they but you don't really think about what really went into that being possible. Yeah. I'm curious about the uh, like the business relationship when a rip is included in the box with the printer. Mm -hmm. So, like um, Onyx will be included um, with HP Latex Onyx mm -hmm. Go, or um, so. <laughs> who's paying who? Is it like Onyx wants to get their name and support and get their uh, you know teeth into a, a user that get them onto an Onyx platform, or is HP? So is HP paying Onyx? Is Onyx paying HP? Or is it a little bit of... How, how does that work? Or is that all confidential? You don't want to talk about it. So, so some of that's confidential, and we, we probably don't want to talk about it. But I can, I can answer that question. <laughs> the, the, the reality is it's about market share, right? It, it's about market share. Yeah. So is there millions of dollars to be made in having an HP or, or a Go product in an HP? No. I mean, it's free product. Customer gets it in the box, mm -hmm. right? And it's a requirement to make the printer print. But for us, that is customers that will upgrade, that mm -hmm. will will see benefits in the future. We'll see them run that HP, then integrate it to the rest of the products in their shop. Mm -hmm. um, there's strategic data information and, and some of those things that um, are valuable. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it's more about brand awareness it's about market share yeah that makes sense yeah so you mentioned that onyx is a canon subsidiary has that um how long has that been the case has it always been that way or onyx has been owned by can canon for um about 10 years when okay. um canon purchased ose we were a part of ose okay um Holy, what we're a subsidiary, completely separate. Yeah. No, no, they're a customer um, and an owner. Um, that's who I report to, but generally our employees don't have any contact with, with Canon. We're completely separate in yeah. our IT and our, our systems, completely right. separate. We hold our own NDAs so that as we work with all the other manufacturers. There's no cross there. It's really um, a technology benefit for both companies. Yeah. And it's nice being part of a $15 billion yeah, dollar right? company. <laughs> I bet. There's I've heard resources. one discouraging thing. So if you work all the way to the point and you get promoted to president, you can still have a boss? I thought if you <laughs> made it to president, <laughs> that was it. You're the we boss. We all report to somebody. Oh, we my all goodness. I've got to rethink to everything now. <laughs> so how big of an organization is Onyx? In terms of the number of employees and where you guys are located? and So 55 people. Um, headquarters are in Salt Lake, Utah. We have sales all over the world. We have teams in Europe. We have teams in Asia. We have remote salespeople in the U.S. Um, coming out of COVID, we have a hybrid work approach. So there's there's people working in the office. There's people working at home. It, it's been um, it's, it's really a great group of people. It's great to see the cultures come together globally when we have our, our sales kickoff meetings, having the Europeans come in and people from Asia. Um, all The customers are the same. The problems are the same. Um, the markets are the same. Different languages. Hmm. It's fun. What if printers were made like cars? So like the steering wheel is on the left side. Like what if like all the stuff was on the left instead of the right when they made a printer? 
Right. That would be that would be interesting. Be more drivers to make, right? That was Matt saying he didn't want to talk about that. <laughs> it was a it was a dumb question. It was a dumb question. <laughs> I I'm pretty much I think this has been really cool to kind of peel back the layers a little bit and get a little better understanding. Is there anything that you would want to leave, you know, viewers, listeners with in terms of where Onyx is going and and how uh how like kind of where you see um things heading why why customers should be looking at onyx as a as a rip software provider maybe they're using something else or maybe they don't they're trying to uh, trying to figure out uh you know how to automate like you said or how to to uh, make their shop a little bit more efficient how can how, how can onyx help and how would you advise someone as they're kind of looking at different rips and well i i think it comes down to we are in the shops when when we're developing tools, when when we're when we're adding functionality, value to the rip, it comes from users, right? We we take pride in knowing that as we come out and our product evolves, it evolves from the learning that comes from the customers, their feedback. Hey, I need this to do that. Pantone's going this way. I need you to go that way. Um, these new vertical markets, these new applications. I, I you know, soft signage, textile, backlit, um, and and all of the feature and functionality that needs to be in the rip to support that. The the difference I truly believe with Onyx is that what we do comes from the industry, comes from the customers, and we react to them. And and, it, and honestly, our customers are you, right? So it's it's not just print. It's also about the channel and making sure that the the products are available and we have the drivers for the for the right people that we're steering towards API and JDF connections so that. We're integrated into a shop to make their businesses profitable. Right. That's that's. I mean, that's that's our goal. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's yeah. At the end of the day, the printing industry is just a bunch of businesses that are all trying to be profitable and trying to make the best use of the resources that we have. Like you said, when you're developing a driver, you have to make trade offs. Like, which printers are you going to? Mm -hmm. And for us, it's well, which rip software are we going to? recommend to this customer and which one fits so it's it's really great to have a partner like onyx that we can you know we know that you'll have our back and that you're you're always working to develop uh better solutions for us and for our customers right yeah yeah well i really appreciate you just spending some time with us talking a little bit about uh you know onyx and the market itself i know i learned a few things and hopefully if you're listening you learned a few things right be sure to uh uh leave any comments or questions uh, wherever you find this uh, it'll also be on youtube so leave some comments and we can get answers on that as well but we really appreciate your time happy to be here good and, to see you guys uh, yeah great to see you we'll see you next time on the extended gamut thanks